Hey guys, welcome to the channel. And today we're talking all about luxury living. That's right, we're talking about El Dorado Hills versus Granite Bay. Which one should you move to? Well, let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell because we got new videos coming out for you every single week. So we're gonna put Granite Bay and El Dorado Hills head to head because you guys have been asking, where should I move if I want luxury living? All right, so first of all, let's get into activities, right? El Dorado Hills, it's gonna be right off the Highway 50. Um, you're gonna have Granite Bay. They are actually off of the 80, but pretty far in. So um, when it comes to activities, Granite Bay, there is gonna be a lot of trails. Of course, you butt up to Folsom Lake, so you're gonna have a ton of boating. So if you're a boater, great time to just buy a house there. It takes you about five minutes, you're dropping in. El Dorado Hills, they are near Folsom Lake, but you're gonna to have to drive down into Folsom uh, to drop your boat in unless you can get a slip at the Folsom Dock. Only problem there, uh, there's a waiting list from what I hear. Uh, it could be a couple years before you actually get uh, a slip down there. Also, uh, a lot of times during the summertime, uh, once we get later into the season, they may ask you to remove your boat because the water level gets a little bit lower uh, on that Folsom side. So a lot of people end up having to come to the Granite Bay side. There's biking, hiking for both of them. I will give, which we've all probably heard of here before, the views, you're going to get a lot of skyline views. You're gonna get a lot of the uh, downtown area at night. Um, a lot of beautiful sunsets when you're up in El Dorado Hills. For the most part, Granite Bay is lower, uh, so you're gonna get more of a nature look. Uh, you've got a lot of oak trees in the areas. Uh, you got a lot of people with a little bit more land out there. They got a couple of communities out there that have about, um, every house has somewhere between an acre to two acres, so pretty cool. Price point wise, uh, most of the houses in Granite Bay and El Dorado, uh, they're going to really start at that million dollar mark and go up from there. I will give it to El Dorado Hills that they have a lot more uh, newer style homes. Uh, you're starting to see a lot of people uh, build onto hillsides, uh, neighborhoods being built on the hillsides, and just a lot more uh, luxury feel. When you get into Granite Bay, we do have that. Um, we do have some newer builders, but uh, you also have a lot of older homes in the area that still need some updating. So if you're looking for fresh and new, I'd say you're gonna wanna look a little bit more for variety wise, you're gonna wanna look up into El Dorado Hills. If you like the older style homes, um, a lot of them have still been redone. They're beautiful, larger lots than what you're gonna find up in El Dorado Hills then you wanna get yourself down to Granite Bay, especially lot size. Uh, like I said before, those El Dorado Hill houses, they're going to be built a lot more on hillsides, so the yards can really vary. You could have the, the perfect house, but your backyard is actually going up a hill. So even if you have a larger lot, half of that could be going up a hill, which Granite Bay, flatter, most part, it's gonna either feel larger or just be larger uh, because you have flatter land out there. All right, so for schools, both schools are really great. You're going to have out in Granite Bay is going to be Eureka Union and also Roseville. So you've got two school districts there where when you get up into El Dorado, you're gonna have actually Buckeye uh, Unified School District up there. So again, Granite Bay, two school districts and El Dorado one. When you get into these school districts, they both have Blue Ribbons Awards. The elementaries for both are great. When you get into the high school, uh, they both have award-winning um, teams. These guys from football to volleyball, soccer, really, really great sports programs. I always say that the reason why you see great sports programs in here is because of the support from um, the families, from the communities. I mean, we don't even have kids in high school yet, and we're already going to a lot of the uh, high school fundraisers, a lot of high school games. Uh, just to show our support. And you see that a lot within the communities up here. All right, so for shopping, probably the most important thing here, when you get into El Dorado Hills, you actually have the town center. Town center is gonna have some boutique shopping. They're going to also have the theater there, uh, some great restaurants in the area. 
but not any major brands out there. Same thing when you're in uh, your Granite Bay area, they've got some mom and pop shops spread out a little bit more, uh, but no major shopping. In both cases, I wouldn't worry too much. For El Dorado Hills, you shoot right down to Folsom. You've got everything and anything that you want, as well as for Granite Bay, you are budding right up to uh, Roseville, so you just show it over to the Galleria Mall. Not a lot of shopping within those two communities, but as soon as you get out of those, you've got a lot more options and it's not too far. The other cool thing is because you don't have that type of shopping in those areas, it keeps the traffic down in the neighborhoods, which I think a lot of people appreciate. All right, let's go back and jump into just a little bit more of uh, the living situation. I will say if you are in the El Dorado Hills area, you're going to have a lot more HOAs and Mellow Roses compared to Granite Bay. Granite Bay for the most part is built out. You do have some new communities coming in that we will show you here that are being built out, which will have some Mellow Roses. But when you get up to uh, El Dorado Hills, you actually have communities like uh, Serrano, which are gonna be more gated communities. You're gonna have a lot more HOAs and Mellow Roos fees because of the newer builds. All right, so let's get into weather. So weather is pretty similar on both sides. Um, I'll say that uh, Granite Bay actually is going to usually be a little bit cooler. The reason why is one, they're butt up directly to Folsom and two, they're a little bit lower. Well, El Dorado, you're actually sitting on top of that hill. Uh, they still get a really nice breeze up there, but you are gonna have to deal with that from time to time of being just a few degrees hotter than what you're gonna see down in um, the Granite Bay area. Now also going into PG&E, both communities uh, have PG&E. So a lot of people that we see moving out there are getting solar onto the properties or if they're buying a new one, they usually have solar already built onto them. But with that PG&E bill and the larger lots, you, build, you do have to expect that to be just a little bit higher. So if you are out there in the outskirts, just know that you could be part of the pg shutoffs. If you are, uh, most of our clients have invested in some sort of generator. Uh, Generac generators are probably one of the best out there. Uh, so when the power does shut off, these things have their own panel and within seconds, lights are back on. Um, you can set these things up a, little, a couple different ways. Want more info, of course, leave us a comment. Well, we'll get into that with you. Okay, and then probably the last thing I wanna get into is going to be Granite Bay versus El Dorado Hills commuting. If you are going to have to commute into Sacramento, I've gotta give that to El Dorado Hills. They are right off of Highway 50. You hit that thing and you just zip down. Now, if you're a nine to five job, just know you're gonna have some traffic, of course, cause you're gonna have all the little towns underneath you, including Folsom, including Rancho Cordova coming in. But if you're in Granite Bay and have to get to uh, Sacramento, there's not really a great freeway right out your door. So when you're in Granite Bay, you've got to take Douglas all the way down to the 80. There's a ton of lights in between there. So if it's not the easiest commute, just because that Douglas drive, if you're again into that nine to five drive, you're going to be fighting traffic up and down that. So just know commuting wise, I gotta give that one up to El Dorado Hills. They're just gonna have an easier time to hit that uh, Highway 50 for you. All right guys, that's all I got for you today. That is my Granite Bay versus El Dorado Hills. If you guys want more information about either or, or if you wanna have a conversation and really figure out which one would work for you best, hit us up. You can leave us a comment here you can go ahead and hit that 15 minute zoo or just go ahead and throw us a text message. We'd love to talk to you guys. We'll see you on the next video.